Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the video. And we have Pilsen today in the Hawk 30. And I do die fairly early in this game. I'm just going to let you guys know that now. But I stayed around for this entire game. And it ended up being one of the closest games I have seen in months. Okay, months, guys, um, in World of Tanks. And when you get a really, really close game like this, even if you die early on, I feel like it's very informative, right? To anybody, to yourself, um, you know, watching it. I spectated the G-Soar for the rest of the game, and it's, it's incredible what you can learn just from one really, really close game. You could play 10 games that are stomps and you won't learn anything, but when you, when you get these really close games, this is how you learn, like what works and what doesn't, guys. Um, it's uh, truly like I, I, when you have these these super long close games, you will learn how to play your tank, um, especially if you're in a tank like like a light tank, right? Because it's more strategy based. Um, because if you're in a heavy, really, you're just learning how to angle and stuff like that. But this is how I learn. It's these good games, guys. And again, this is we're we're on Pilsen, right? Like Pilsen is not one of those maps that's good for light tanks. So this is where. You're going to see some, I guess, decent strategy, but it's not as if we're on Prokhorovka and I can give you guys some, you know, insane little tips and tricks, right? There's really only two plays that you can make on Pilsen, in my opinion, that are good for most light tanks, right? If you're in an even 90, you can always get away with these little things, like maybe running down this bush line or doing something a little more fancy. Wouldn't have worked in this game because you have the E50M sitting over here. But for me, playing in the Hawk 30, when I'm in a bigger light tank, I usually, especially one that can deal damage, like I'd rather try and take my chances in this area the g sort tried to you know spot from here and that's fine you can kind of stick out in this bush a little bit and spot people or you can try and push like sometimes i like to get aggressive in certain light tanks and just push all the way through this ridge line and sit right in this bush wouldn't have worked again this game um because the e50m was right there so he probably would have cleaned me up because you can't really duel or brawl um, and do one-on-ones in, in most light tanks, right? You just don't have the DPM. The, the Hawk 30 is pretty good, but it's not that good, right? So even 90 is kind of pushing me here. I know that this guy only has one shot left just based on, you know, him, sh him shooting me once, hitting me, and then missing the second shot. So now I know he only has one shell left. So I was just going to let him push into me there. But he's smart about it. I hit him with one more HE and he moves back again. But now I'm in a situation where the even 90 is keeping me permalit. The Skoda is over here and there's other people over here that can hit me. So now I'm in trouble, man, right? And eventually the Cobra back here ends up cleaning me up and it is what it is. Like, what can you do, right? The only thing I should have probably done is just retreated back to one of these mounds, like maybe back here or even behind this one. Um, once the even 90 kind of circled around me there i should have just left um you just you never know what the situation is going to be right when you come out here and that's the case for for many different games guys you never know like who's going to be out here who you're going to be facing i mean you can look at the lineup but the even 90 started over here right and then he pushed in you never know what people are going to do i took the chance we ended up getting 3,800 spotting. I think this is 3K here, but there was like 800 blind spotting. And we're going to win the East. Um, you know, we, I think that's pretty clear. However, you will see what happens in this game. And I, I personally believe that these guys threw the game. I don't think you can look at it any other way, but I would love to hear what you guys think. Truly, I want to know what you guys think. And... I want to know specifically if you if you watch the entire replay tell me oh you know this guy could have done this play this guy could have done that play um like anything you guys see i would love to hear your opinions on this game because this was just such a unique and interesting game and i like seriously i would love to have a conversation with you guys in the comment section about this you know madness in this game so anyway let me pause and just kind of explain. This is going to be a long video, but I want to explain what has happened here, right? I died in this area. The even 90 made kind of a dumb play. He didn't seem like a very good player, and he sat there, 
even you know while he was still spotted and someone cleaned him up it was the wz or scorpion g or something like that now the g sword did a pretty good job um spotting this but i did as well right from this mound i'm telling you with cvs if you get up to this mound and you keep poking it you will spot people in this area maybe not people that are all the way back in this corner but you can spot people in this area um so this is why I recommend this play. However, you have to keep in mind the situation that I found myself in is that people have all kinds of angles. Someone could shoot you from here. Someone could shoot you from here. You have to you know, worry about this. Maybe even someone from like over here in this corner or something. And then you have all the people over here. There's so many angles that you have to you know be mindful of and be careful of that... This is why like nobody likes Pilsen. Like light tank players don't like Pilsen for this reason, right? And then you have this bush line and there's gaps in the bushes here. So it's almost like a mini Prokhorovka over here, I like to say, where, you know, on the one side of the map where you have the bush line, right? But this is, it's a dangerous play to try and run through this bush line. I'm telling you, because there's these weird gaps and people will spot you from here. And if you get lit over here, like everyone in A0, or if you're on the other spawn, everyone in H0 is going to absolutely light you up and you're going to die because you're, you know, it's wide open straight shots for the tank destroyers. Now, what has happened here in this particular game? We have one, two, three, four, five, six teammates over here and the g-sore will kind of be leading the charge because he's the light tank we have yeah one two three four five six people but wait i'm not done yet look at the hp full hp on the scorpion g full hp on the wz111 full hp on the scorpion g over here um at least half hp on the m5y and at least half hp on the lion i would even argue maybe two-thirds hp um uh, for, for these guys or whatever, you know, um, it looks, it looks to be that they're both at a little more than half their HP. This is a lot, a lot of HP guys over on this side of the map, a lot, thousands and thousands of HP. We're up by 916 HP and three tanks right now. So you're wondering how the heck is it possible that this game was so close? I don't know if I told you guys, we, we lost this game. I'm just going to spoil it for you. We ended up losing this game. So I'm telling you, you're going to want to stick around to see how that happened. Uh, did I did I say that we threw this one? But anyway, moving on, guys. I want to show you all that so you can kind of understand the situation here. Really show you all the HP, show you all the tanks that we have over here. These big hitters, two Scorpion Gs and a, and a WZ-111 GFT. Um, it's to me like I just don't, I don't understand. I'm trying to... I've watched this replay multiple times, and I'm still trying to understand how we ended up losing this one. But hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the east side of this map also as we move on here. Because Pilsen is just, it's an ugly map for light tanks, man. Uh, it's really, it's a brawling map for heavies. If you are, if you enjoy Pilsen, you're likely like a hold down, brawling, heavy, medium kind of you know, tank, medium, heavy, medium tank type of player, right? Um, tank destroyers can have a good time on this map, but I feel like you're better off on many other maps, like open maps. So now watch what happens. The lion moves in here. He gets whacked by the gorilla or the T95 and then gets cleaned up by the E100. This is a really dumb play, man, because he had a good amount of HP to spare and he just threw it all away, right? The M5Y is going to kind of make a smart poke here, in my opinion. Um, He's trying to angle, he's he's playing the right way and trying to get shots on the Skoda and all. And Scorpion G is over here. He's trying to get shots going into the into the gorilla and all. What do I see that's wrong here? I mean, not that much yet, guys, right? The T-44 is pushing in, trying to flank. The Kuravats, or however you say this tank, is also pushing in. The Scorpion, uh, no, we the other Scorpion G here, WZ-111 is now pushing in. I think it might have been better for this guy to get, like, maybe up over here. But look, suddenly the Scorpion G lost all of his HP, likely to the Gorilla and T95, maybe the CDA, because um, he got lit here. So he just threw away all of his HP. And now the WZ is trying to poke. He's a he's a turretless tank destroyer, right? So I don't know if this is the smartest idea for him. So this is why, again, I, I want to emphasize, whatever you guys think, like, any one of these players could have done better, comment and, and let me know. Because um, I'm not an expert with all tanks. I'm not even an expert in World of Tanks, like some of these other streamers and stuff. Um, and I, I don't know. I would love to know what you guys think. But here's where I know 
a play that the G-Sor could have made to win this game. And what do you guys think that is? Looking, looking at the map right now, what do you think? And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a tip. He's about five meters away from it right now. What play do you guys think this guy could have made to, to have won this game, right? He could have capped. He could have capped. You could sit right here. The G-Sor is a tiny little tank. You could sit right here and be safe. Look, you're safe from everyone. You sit right in this little area and no one can get shots on you except like maybe the gorilla might have a shot, but I don't think so, man. I think you can sit in this little area and cap out. I really, really do. And I told that, I said that to this guy in the chat, not in a rude manner, not in a toxic way like a lot of people do. I just said, dude, you probably could have capped in this corner. You might have thrown the game. Is it possible that the gorilla could have a shot here? Maybe. I mean, it's possible, guys, but I don't I don't think so. I really think he could, he could sit in this little area right here in this corner and remain safe from the gorilla. I really do. And even if that wasn't the case, eventually the gorilla runs out of here. And you see the WZ's now losing a lot of HP. Scorpion G's trying to play it safe and still get shots. But eventually the gorilla moves out of this area. The g sword keeps poking him to get shots and the gorilla moves out. And when the gorilla moved out, I would have capped. I am not one of those players that likes to cap, guys. And I said this to this guy as well. Like, dude, I totally get it. You want damage. I, I understand. I'm the same way. Like, I hate you know, trying to um, cap out because it makes everybody's score worse. People hate capping, and I, I get that. But sometimes the game calls for a cap, guys. Like, never be afraid to, to just cap out. Just cap out. If you, if you need to cap out to lure the enemy out or whatever, do it. Because I'm telling you, with the Scorpion G behind him as well, if this guy could stay safe in this little corner there's no way this gorilla would be able to do anything right and now watch the gorilla is going to run away if i'm in the situation now i'm telling you like i would run here for maybe a moment to stay away from the cda and then i would sit right here and cap you still have time there's six minutes left in the game man just cap you know but anyway moving on from that guys i think i've said cap like a hundred times in the last two minutes but let's continue watching i know you guys probably want to see the m5y but i stayed on the g sword for now but m5y comes out the gorilla is here he ends up he ends up getting cleaned up by the m5y and then you have the e100 and the amx cda left now once the g sword gets up here i'm going to pause again so you guys can see what we have okay you can see where the HP is, where the enemies are, and everything that's going on, and we're going to talk about it. Um, you know, we're, we're going to pause the video and do another quick um, overview and talk, right? Okay. Wait for the CDA to get spotted here. And let's pause right here. So, Scorpion G is right here. Okay? Keep that in mind because you'll see what this guy does later on. T44 has 817 HP. G Sword is a one shot, right? In this situation, what do you think the G-Sor should do? Uh, debatable, right? This guy could really do anything right now if he wanted to. He can try and sit here and, and poke a shot in this guy because the T-44 has 817 HP. He's not going to die to one shot from the E-100, um, I'm almost certain. So what you have to do in the G-Sor, in my opinion, is keep flanking. Because you see the CDA coming this way? Now, I'm not saying the g is a perfect player. I probably wouldn't, it would have taken me a second to understand this, but I just want to give you guys this overview to show you how many mistakes that my team made. Um, and I make mistakes every game, guys. I make mistakes every single game. I made a big mistake this game, so I'm not trying to, you know, talk from a position of authority or anything like that. I just want you to see how much had to go wrong for us to lose this game, and it can happen. But let's watch now. So, I'm thinking the G-Sword probably should have kept going, right? The E-100 had fired. I would I would have tried to continue flanking. Scorpion G comes around the corner here. He's able to get the shot to the E-100. The E-100 decides to shoot the G-Sword. Now, let's go back and watch this one more time because the G-Sword claimed that the T-44 pushed him into the shot. I would slightly agree with this. The T-44 did nudge him, but if you watch what happens here, right? Just kind of watch this carefully. I think the g Sor had enough time to move. He backs up, right? The T-44 also backs up. The T-44 pushes him. Immediately, if this happened to me, I would be like trying to back out of this or start pulling forward. So watch. Instead, the g Sor stays there and he gets hit. 
would he, would, he have, would he have had time to get away from that shot? Maybe not, but he ends up dying. Let's pause one more time, guys. What do you now, what do you now think the T-44 should do in this situation? If I'm the T-44, I'm getting out of this situation, right? Because the E-100 is going to have the advantage every time in a situation like this. So what I'm going to do in the T-44 is I'm going to run away from here. The AMX CDA is here. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you go, but I would I would probably run this way. The E100 has a really long reload. Start going after the CDA. So that allows the Scorpion to now push in and maybe have a different angle, right? I wouldn't do this if I was a one-shot, but the T44 has 817 HP. He can probably take two shots from the CDA, maybe even three. I don't know the, C the AMX CDA's shots, shot damage. Two shots, maybe. But the E100 has a long enough reload where this guy can could escape right but he decides to hang out here and even then I, if i was the t44 in this situation try and come around the corner and just take a shot at the e100 or something like do something to to make this guy turn his turret or whatever right um but instead he kind of just hangs out here he allows the e100 to to reload for i don't know what the e100's reload speed is guys but i know it's pretty damn long so he allows the e100 to reload he waits for the cda to push him and then he tries to escape and come around the corner and the e100 cleans him up so maybe not the worst play he could have made but there were a much better plays there right so now you have the e100 at a one shot the cda is at a two shot to the scorpion scorpion g is now running away um i will switch to him in a moment and you can see me in the chat saying to the uh the g sword like dude you i think you might have thrown like there's a corner behind cover you were right next to it and i told him it's okay i, I understand you want to damage but you might have thrown man like if you sat in that corner and capped out i think we would have won the game but again i don't i don't want to be toxic in the chat this is why i say it in this way guys i don't like type like shitter and all that i just say hey man next time if you're in this situation you might want to try to cap like i think that might have been a better better option but again, I died early on, guys. So again, I don't, I'm not trying to be like condescending or anything like that. You know, um, I'm not a, I'm not a perfect player. There's many better light tank players than me, but I just like to give my advice and try and help people out. Um, would have been fine if the T44 hadn't stopped me from getting back into cover. And I do, I like half agree with that, man. He got nudged. Um, but I don't know. It was just, it was a little strange there. I know it definitely wasn't intentional, but everyone can have their opinion on that little nudge that T44 gave him. So let's fast forward to the rest of this, guys, and then we'll kind of, we'll get into the end plates and I'll just go over one more time kind of what happened in this game. Um, so let's see. The CDA pushes into the Scorpion. The Scorpion backs up so that he's solid bush there, takes the shot into the CDA, and now you have a one-shot CDA and a one-shot E100. One more mistake the Scorpion does here. I would probably have run this way. I would have ran this way. So this way, I can, you know, you maybe have a little more time to react. You can sit in this corner. Um, but instead, the Scorpion G decides to sit right here. And I think this is kind of dumb because he's wide open here. Like, I don't think this is a great play. Like, I would have just continued running away, right? But again, this is one of those things, like, you can't blame this guy entirely. You can't really blame any one person, I think, for this loss. I think it was just a combination of so many mistakes that people, that we all made in this game that led to the loss, you know? And even if we made one less mistake, we might have won it, right? It's kind of like a like a basketball game or something like that. Like you lost by one basket. You can blame any one person that missed any one shot, right? But ultimately it was, it's it's always a team effort. And when you combine all the mistakes or in terms of uh, basketball or something, all the missed shots into one, then as a team you lost. And I think that's one of the situations um, that we're, we're seeing in this game is it was just so many mistakes. Um, and again, you can blame any one person, but it was just, it was a combination of all these mistakes that led to us losing this game. So you see there the CDA ended up coming from up top, kind of sneaking up on the um, Scorpion G and uh, you know, it's tough, man. Like when you're the Scorpion G, you got to be looking both directions. Like, again, you can't blame one person, but we ended up losing this game, guys. Would you believe that? So certainly I could have played better. Absolutely. Like, I'm again, I'm not trying to blame any one person, 
I could have played better, any of us could have played better, but we lost the game, and that's it, guys. We'll move on. Um, here's the end plates. I did 3876 spotting, 687 damage. Um, Again, 687 damage, so we are at the bottom here. Um, and again, like I, I could have played way better, right? I did a lot of spotting, though, guys. Like I feel like the plays that I made led us to win, allowed us to win the east side of this map very quickly. And I think it was just the fact that my team didn't take advantage of that um, is the, one of the main reasons why we lost overall, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, we made 81k because of all the spotting, but I would have loved to have had a little bit more damage this game. So that's about it, guys. But I would love to hear what you think about this game. Do you think that I'm right to say that the G-Source should have just capped out? Like, I really think he should have capped out. And this way we would have won because we would have had to draw, if anything, in order to reset. Um, unless the Gorilla could have snuck a shot in there, I don't think so. Um, these guys would have had to come around the corner and they would have had to press into the G-Sore and then the shots would be there, right? The shots would absolutely be there for the Scorpion G or whoever, and you can easily defend um, your, your G-Sore who is sitting on the cap. So that's what I think, guys. I think that was the biggest mistake that was made in this game was by the G-Sword, but again, I'm not blaming anybody. The T-44 was pretty dumb at the end there, too. Um, I think he could have made better plays. The Scorpion threw away all his HP, you know, um, when he tried to um, take shots at the Gorilla and the T-95 or whatever, so yeah, I mean, I think I've said everything I wanted to say in this video, guys, but I just really, really want to um, how can I say, like, emphasize um, everything that happened in this game, because World of Tanks, most games are stomps. And when you watch a game like this, this is when you're going to learn um, by, like, trial and error, right, um, what works and what doesn't work. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it gives you some, some um, tips and, and general advice for... Pilsen, because Pilsen, again, like I said, is just kind of a garbage map, but I hope it helps you out. I hope you learn something, guys. If you do like the content, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. And again, even if you don't sub or like the video, comment and let me know what you think about any anybody's particular plays um, in this one that you think might have won us this game. That's it, guys. Um, one more um, thing just to uh, like reiterate and update you guys. I would like to do at least one video a week. I'm hoping, hoping that I can get two in, but again, I'm working 64 hours a week now, which is a lot. So at, you know, at, at least I'm going to get you guys one good video. This might be the only one this week, but anyway, hope it's informative. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.